What's up guys, Justin Barry here. You got the Crappie Connection, you got my sidekick. Brad Chapel here. And we got a special guest, Josh Jones from Sapopo, Oklahoma. Josh, welcome man. Appreciate it, thanks for having me. Appreciate Come on, it. man. Yeah, We're so here. if you don't know Josh, he is uh, from again from Sapopo, Oklahoma. His home lake is Keystone Lake. Um, he's, he's sponsored by Huckabee Rods, Garmin, Phoenix Boats, The Bass Tank, Bonehead Tackle, and Beaver Bottom Baits. Uh, guys, if you are on social media, I promise you, you know Josh Jones. He is the pretty much the guy that's brought LiveScope to Blowing social media. Yeah. Social media with LiveScope videos. And they're yeah. awesome, man. They're, they are freaking awesome. Loving them. Yeah. So uh, let's just get di dipped right in on that. I'm sure that that's pretty much what you're well known for is pretty much bringing that to everybody's table. You're pretty much teaching everybody. You're taking people on guided trips, showing them what to do, how to do it. Um, how long have you had this? So I got the live scope June twelfth. I've been running the Panoptics, you know, the first generation yeah. live scope since basically it came out four years ago. Started with the PS twenty one transducer with the thirty degree cone. You mm -hmm. couldn't really pinpoint fish with it. You could find big schools out in no man's land and cast and reel to them, you know. Spooning. It's it was good with spoon fishing, but with targeting individual fish the PS22 transducer with the narrower cone, that's when I mm -hmm. I learned, mm -hmm. hey, I can pick these things off. What well, was really neat about what he just said, he knew the date that he got that yeah. unit. It yeah. stuck in your mind that yeah, hard how much of a game changer I mean, it it's, it's life-changing. It I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be catching anything without it. I, if I didn't have that on my boat, I would be below mediocre, yeah. below average. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of the the craziness that's, that everybody's ordering the Garmin. There is some kind of back order I'm hearing. Is that right? No, oh, yeah, months. Months of them back order. So it came in waves. The first, when uh, when it came out, it was released to the public in July. Mm -hmm. You know, I posted a few videos that went viral, and they sold out. They were on like a six to eight week back order. It kind of died off until, you know, Crappie Masters was one with it on Darbone. Yeah. One pole fishing on a lake that's traditionally a spider rigging lake. Uh, Paul Mueller with the uh, Elite. Gunnersville was one with it. Gunnersville, yeah. ACT was one with it. The Bassmaster Elites was one with it out there in uh, Lake Lanier, I think it was. Bassmaster's so, using it, huh? The bass guy. Yeah, yeah. Really? Paul Mueller. Anybody's going to use caught, it. He caught every fish with it. Really? So yeah. it's, I mean, there's no denying it anymore. It that, is the game changer. You know, when, when I first started posting videos, so I sold a lot of the original Panoptics, but this live scope is next level. Um, when I first started posting videos, I took a lot of heat from naysayers. Yeah. You know, oh, that's, that's nothing. My other thing's better. Mm -hmm. I can do the same thing you're doing with 2D. You know, right. well, when you start posting pictures of three pounders caught in Oklahoma where there's not many three pounders, not people really start known, to catch yeah. on. Yeah. And maybe they just wanted to not yeah. listen to me, but when people start getting it and people start talking, then you get it, you get it, then it just expands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if this was a pyramid scheme, you know, yeah. like <laughs> selling makeup, right. yeah. dude, I'd be at the top. I'd be a multi-millionaire. So. <laughs> Speak of, of, we talk about the views. You said, how many views did you already have before? So, on my personal page, it's like, oh, it's over 2 million. Over like, 2 million views. Everybody wanting to dial in on the live scope there. Yeah, but you know people have been stealing my videos and there's a lot of my videos circling around i got upwards of three million wow and i'm not a pretty girl with a nice body too you know no. so it, it, you know talking <laughs> no about fish, now talking about fishing electronics you know people are really intrigued with you know hey how are you going out every single day and catching two and a half pound fish you know what i think that's so great about you know what you've done is is bringing so much light to crappie fishing a sport in general that's kind of been left behind or, you know, I wouldn't say forgotten because everybody does it like we talked about earlier. Everybody crappie fishes just about. Mm -hmm. It's just not known in the fishing world or given the credit and you're helping bring that to light. So as a crappie fisherman, as a guide, as a crappie tournament fisherman, man, man, we want it. We, we need it. Yeah. It's bringing sport. You that's know, right. I, when I started fishing, I would go throw an anchor out the back of the boat, anchor in the front, put 21 poles out to the side and hope. Right. This brings a whole new aspect. You're going out to the lake, and you're hunting Absolutely. for the biggest fish you can find. Yeah, you're not fishing no more. You're no, hunting. Huh? You're, you're on that trolling motor, and you're moving. Hey, I'm going to go find the biggest fish in this lake. 
I know for me, one thing that I think that's changed my aspect of it is I always feel like I'm in productive area. If I'm not seeing fish on my mm. live scope, mm. if, if I'm not seeing, I know I'm not in the productive area. Mm-hmm. Because if you can't put your bait in front of the fish, there's no way you're going to catch him. So you can still, so I found out Thursday, I, I, I had an area of the lake, I knew there was fish. I get there, no fish. Well, I figured out that they're on bottom. You can just barely see mm-hmm. them on bottom. So there is one weakness with it. If the fish are holding tight to bottom, you probably won't be able to see them that much. They were biting. When you found one, you would get it to bite. But a couple months ago, I would have pulled up to that area and thought, there's no fish, let's go. Mm-hmm. But now, hey, I know I need to start looking at the bottom because these fish are holding tight to the bottom. What do they look like on the bottom? Just a blip. Just a little, just a little blip. A little knot. Yeah, it. it's... You kind of got to hope. All right, I hope that's a fish. Let's, yeah. you know, let's put a bait down there. Yeah. Um... Man, bef- go ahead. I, I got one thing that I've kind of noticed, and I think that the more I'm using it, the more I'm uh, realizing too is some of the myths about crappie fishing. Mm-hmm. What's some of the the myths that you've debunked in your mind, as far as like fish hitting, always hitting up or yeah, they hit down. down. They'll hit down. Um, mm-hmm. I try never to have my bait down, right? Because then your line risks bumping into the fish right. I, I think we experienced that on on the res what, what we was really excited for is when we just had rods out you come up you could see where that fish is positioned and when you come up behind it i'm guessing that line or something touched it and it spooked yeah. it and ran off oh, yeah, like i mean freight train you got to stay above them especially spider rigging mm-hmm. you're pushing your baits into them you have to stay above mm-hmm. them because if you there could be a four pounder out there that your line brushes up against and he's gone yeah i mean i think that's really important yeah to stay I know one thing that's blown my mind with the live scope, and like I said, I've just had it for, let's say, eight weeks, and I there just seems to be so many fish in the lake that, man, they're from the top of the water column mm-hmm. to the bottom, and then all of a sudden they're sitting at the bottom, they swim up top, and then they're at the top swimming to the bottom. So they're they're all over. Yeah. I've went across this. I came across this before. Um, I had a buddy that fished my home like Keystone yesterday. Mm-hmm. He went to the traditional areas where we've been catching them. He said it was filled with shad. He went to the main lake on the river channel. Before you knew it, he was 300 yards away from any piece of structure or the shore in the middle of the lake catching crappie. Yeah. I mean, they're they're out. I'm sitting here looking at the lake. They're out there in the middle. Yeah. I know they are. Absolutely. So they're just everywhere right now. So. Hey, let's turn that TV off real quick just to make sure I hear that tick, 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 tick. On the other side, reach up there real quick, turn it off. Just to make sure. Got a little tick sound behind it. Tick. Hey, but, uh, before we go into details of of the live scope and all that, because we want to talk about that, let's talk about get the rod set up and what you use out of the way. Um, show it up on a... We got a lot of comments on YouTube wanting to show the close-up of, of what they use, the baits, the equipment they have and everything. So, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is a 12-foot slab swinger. How could be rod slab swinger. Like They're all that. sold out. I mean... Uh, it's a it's a one rod type of technique. You're only going to need one rod on the boat. Um, with with my style of fishing, you're targeting individual fish, so multiple rods isn't necessary. So you want the best rod you can get to swing a three four pound fish in the boat like that. Um, you know, I I always have a twelve footer. Um, it always has braided line on it. Mm-hmm. I use vicious twenty pound braid. Obviously, there's a lot of different companies out right. there. Um, 20 why pound braid. Why use that heavy of a line? It has a six pound diameter. Right. Um, it prevents you from losing jigs. Right. You know, if you do get hung up on a tree, most of the time you're going to pull it off and you're not going to have to retie all day long. Uh, the braid, it, there's no stretch. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to set the hook as hard as you can. Mm-hmm. You know, you can really just set the hook like that and he's hooked. Um, there. It's just the sensitivity, the strength, really. Just what you like. Yeah, you could do that yeah. with a 10-pound braid, yeah. you know. But the smaller braid you get, and you're not going to be able to tell on this, there's a lot of different uh, jig heads that aren't completely closed right. on the tip. Right. And you get too small of a diameter, you set the hook, there goes your jig head because it just yeah. went through the little crack. Right. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. that's why 20-pound, I've always used 20-pound. Mm-hmm. That's the... Uh, what about, I, I know I asked you already before the show started, but I, what kind of knot? Polymer. So 
So I use a polymer knot on top, or not on top, on bottom, and mm -hmm. I use a, a loop knot on top. The top jig is mainly just so you can see your bait. Mm -hmm. You're never going to catch a fish on the top jig hmm. because you're targeting the fish with the bottom right, jig. Right, and you're bringing it down to him. Very unlikely. You might catch one a week on top jig. So if you're not catching fish on top jig, don't think, oh, it's because the bait is the wrong color. It, you're, you're pinpointing these fish so accurately right. that the bottom one's the only one you're going to need. I got another thing that... Uh that I'm still learning with the live scope and it's teaching me, but uh, jig color. Mm -hmm. How much uh, weight or preference do you do you see fish having in jig colors? <clears throat> it's all personal preference. It's a confident saying more than anything. I have my favorite colors. I don't really think Do you go through a lot of colors as you're fishing throughout the day? I'll be honest. I just reach in the bag and grab the first one that's there. Really? So you don't really think it's a lot to no. do with I, jig color? So I have I have clear water colors. You know, Bobby Garland, mm -hmm. Monkey Milk, that's mm -hmm. a clear water color. Right. I've used clear water colors in the muddiest water possible, one inch visibility. I've used muddy water colors, you know, uh, a Paradise Beaver Bottom mm -hmm. or Bonehead. Or this is a, a muddy water color, Beaver Bottom. In clear water, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I think in the clear water, it's it's all the the profile. Mm -hmm. In the clear water, you don't want to be as close to them. Mm -hmm. I was fishing a lake yesterday with fairly clear water. I'm used to fishing muddy water, so I'm trying to put that bait right on that fish because they, you know, it's muddy water. They can't tell it's there. Well, I was doing that in clear water yesterday, and they were gone. Spooked them. So I, I had to learn yesterday, I had to keep my bait about two feet above that fish for him to come up and hit it. And the thing about it, the visibility was probably only about 14 inches. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they could just see, but I had to keep my bait far apart, far away from them. So I don't know if color really matters. I know another myth or... I guess I'm considering a myth in my experience is dark days, dark colors, bright days. You know, it might it might matter. Color might matter. It may matter. I don't know. Um, but when you can pinpoint these fish and put your bait so close to that fish's face, I think they're going to hit it. You know, if they're in a feeding mood. Now, some days they might go six feet to it. Some days they might go one centimeter to it. But if you find that fish's head. And you put that bait, and you're just jigging it right in front of that fish. He's gonna hit it. So, uh, you know, we talked a while ago about about coming in behind a fish and kind of spooking it. Are, if you see, if you come up on a fish and you know it's a good one, have you have you caught yourself turning around and going and going towards a, a different presentation? So I just try to stay downwind. Um, I don't want to get too close. I don't want to risk the boat going over him. So. I try to figure out which way he's moving because mm -hmm. the fish, a lot of time he's going to sit still, but when the boat gets close, you have a small window to catch him before he starts moving away. Right. And that's all of them. They don't just sit there for yeah. an hour letting you. So once they start moving, then you know where his head is. Okay. That's his head because he's moving that way. So let me get my rod and reach out as far as I can. I'll take that 12 foot rod. I'm standing on the front of the boat and just reaching out, trying to get in front of him. And, you know, you, it's a lot of cat and mouse. You do a lot of chasing. Mm -hmm. Once you get in front of these fish and you know, based on the water clarity, how far you need to stay away from it to not scare them. Three inch visibility out there is pretty muddy. You need yeah. to stay about three inches away in front of them and let him come to you. Don't come up behind him and scare him. Yeah. You know. So. It's speaking of chasing them down, what what, what do you tie up to? Because obviously, depending on how deep you are, you got to get that weight down there fast mm -hmm. and good. What, what's your setup on that? So, my typical setup every single day. Yeah, hold up close to that GoPro there. I don't have the other jig. It's over there. But I normally have a quarter ounce on bottom. A quarter ounce on bottom. Quarter ounce jig head on bottom. And I use a two aught hook. I like, um, I like a big hook. Yeah, yeah, big hooks for sure. I, I have a big one on bottom, and typically I have, and that's a polymer knot on bottom. On top, I'm using a one eight, maybe a quarter sometimes, just depends. Um, 12 inches above, 18 12, inches? 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. It, like I said, you're not ever going to catch them on the top. So do you ever just use just a plain why sinker? You, why wouldn't you use a, a, yeah, a, a split shot? So the split shots, 
I get fired up, man. You set the hook, sometimes they fly off. So I've tried it. I got you. I don't necessarily like the two jigs, but in my style of fishing, it works perfect. Yeah, you got to get it down there. But, I mean, a lot of people think I just hit standing timber. You don't want to hit standing timber with two jigs because you set the hook, your top one will get hung right. while you're bringing the fish up. You know, you don't want to lose a big fish. But my style, open water fishing, it works perfect. Say tomorrow, Millwood, if they are on the trees, I have a hunch they're probably going to be on the trees. I'll have one jig, mm-hmm. one quarter ounce, and the only jig heads I use is a beaver bottom. Mm-hmm. That's the only jig heads you use? Well, n- this style. This style, yeah. You know, I, I use those Timmy Toms for in the brush. If I'm hitting brush piles. They're buried in there. Yeah, it's weedless. Um, there, well, There's well, so many styles. So, when, what were you going to say? When, when, you use, when do you use this small one here? You got so, this one laid out. So, here's something. This is this show happens the GoPro every there. single day. Every single day. I'll have a fish come up and look at this three-inch bonehead. My favorite bait in the world. They'll stare at it for a couple minutes, okay? Yeah. You can put scent. You can put whatever you want to put on this bait. They will not hit it. You put that bait down. You grab a hair jig. Instantly. Thump, Just took instantly. a smaller profile is the key? Uh, something. I, I don't... Smaller profile. So, so in this style, when you're pinpointing these individual fish, quickness is key. That's why I use the quarter-ounce jigs. So when you are using a 32nd or a 64th ounce jig, you're going to have to put a weight above it, a quarter ounce weight, mm-hmm. you know, above this jig to get it down quick. Mm-hmm. Cuz once you see that fish, now you might be following him slowly, but if you can keep eyes on that fish, put that big bait down, pick up small bait, and 9 times out of 10 he's going to hit it. S- yeah. Speaking of 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 changing, he won't hit the big bait. You go to a smaller profile hair jig. When when do you find yourself using minnows? Summer, when the water gets hot. I, I can't explain why. So no matter if you put it right down there in front on top of them, tapping them on the nose, whatever, put that minnow down there, it's totally different. What about really cold? No, I just use just jigs. Straight so down. in the summer, I've seen where they won't hit a big bait, they won't hit a small bait, and they won't have hit a minnow. But as soon as you drop that spoon down there, instantly spoon you ever use uh bladed jigs i have some timmy toms in there um in the summer i think it spooks them that's my opinion right now they're thumping these these crappie are thumping jigs hard bladed jig would work especially in this muddy water Mm -hmm. you know it it brings attention to them especially trolling that flash moving around you know going down the lake so different days different presentations man that, that spoon deal, though, I think that's a most forgotten about type of fishing. I mean, I had I had clients last year at Sky Took. There were seven or eight fish on a group of four or five trees. Mm-hmm. I dropped everything on them. So, the, and I, I stayed on these trees for about five minutes. You know, Live Scope was showing me. They're right here. Yeah. I. <laughs> they're right there, man. They're right there. I mean, <laughs> and you could tell there were some big ones in there, a pound and a half. I pick up that spoon. The first drop, as soon as I dropped it, pound and a half or instantly. How big is this spoon? I never use a spoon for crab uh, fishing. Inch and a half or I have one two in my inch? bag, but the spoon is about three inches, three eighths ounce. Mm-hmm. Pretty good size. Treble spoon. hook. It's got a, a swivel at the top and okay. a treble hook at the yeah. bottom. My buddy, Soak Up, he only uses one ounce spoons. Really? So, what about, a, <clears throat> I know we talk about targeting fish. Do you ever cast them? Like cast out a spoon and then retrieve it in? Uh, not yeah. really. Not I don't really cast to them. Because, um, I mean, essentially, as long as you can cast straight, you can watch that jig go down and bring it back. So my style of fishing is muddy water. Mm-hmm. I can get above these fish all over the country. I go to the muddiest water. This would fit my style out here. What lake is this, Washington? Lake Washington. Yeah, because yeah. you can get over the top of them. And you'll have a few seconds before they spook. The casting thing is a clear water technique. If it's a clear water lake, I'm probably not going to go. You know, so you're not even going to go? No, because that's just not my style. Really? It's just not fun to me. Hmm. So, well, fishing's got to be fun, huh? I yeah. Agree. Yeah. And something about clear water lakes, I don't think the crappie get as big. 
Every Clearwater Lake I know. And Caps and Coleman, um, that's one of the things I believe it was Ronnie Caps. He always searches for the the greenest water in the lake. Yeah. You know, up he said it's fertile. Part. It's the fertilest water. Yeah. And hmm. I agree with that. I mean, that's, I that's just try to find the muddiest water. Yeah. Because it it fits my style. They're not as spooky. Mm-hmm. And vertical fishing, man. I mean, and it seems like the muddiest water, those big white crappie thrive. Yeah. On every lake I go to, Keystone, there's a clear water side, there's a muddy water side. Clear water side, you can go catch 300, but they're all 12 inches. Right. Muddy water side, you're going to catch 100, and they're going to be pound and a half. Mm-hmm. So that's like that all over the country, at least where I fish. Yeah. You know, go go to the muddiest water, far away from the dam. At least if there's white crappie in there, there's going to be some toads. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's more most tournaments are one away from the dam. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like, let, one comes to mind, Fork. Yeah. You know, that tournament's going to be one up around Shotgun Pass just about every year. Mm-hmm. I've only fished it once, but I've done a lot of studying on it, you know. Yeah. But that's just, like, everywhere. Well, I, you know, one of our questions that we ask everybody is, what's a, a, a body of water that you want to fish and you haven't been there yet? It won't be a clear lake, right? Obviously, Grenada, because I just hear about it all the time. I I, see pictures. Right. I see plaques. (laughs) Right. 3.25 pounds. Yep. Big Mama, Grenada Lake. That's why I want to go there. Yeah. It gets recognition for a lot of reasons, and big fish is obviously why people go there. I I hear that's not even the best from some some locals. Yeah. Arca Butler's probably one that comes to mind that Mm -hmm. would fit your style as far as muddy water and giant fish. Yep. Scattered open water fish that's yeah. that's kind of my specialty with the live scope mm-hmm. just picking them off one by one i try to find the timber because it seems like timber there's more fish but a lot of times they're not on it mm-hmm. they're just roaming around so so with as good as you are with the live scope round do you plan to fish a lot of tournaments going in as your your fishing career or so what kind of direction you want to go with yourself with this with me guiding and with me having a good paying career it, I actually lose money fishing a tournament. So it would be bragging rights, and at this point, I don't just, I don't see a need for it. A lot of people say I'm scared or whatever. It, it costs me money to go right. fish a tournament. Yeah, yeah. Unless I win a new boat right. against 150 other people, unlikely. I don't care how good I am. You still got to be, yeah. you still got to have some fishing. luck. You, yeah. I have live scope. I'm probably best at it. I'm not going to go out there and beat you. It's not gonna happen. Right. Maybe if I have a month out there. Right. And you don't have live scope. Yeah. So, it's still a risk. Yeah. It's not because I'm afraid to lose. Cause hey, look how many tournaments Kevin Van Dam's lost. Right. Four hundred. Look how many he's won. Twenty something. Right? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lose if I go. Oh, absolutely. Probably. Um, I know a lot of guys are probably gonna be chiming in due to the live scope and all your knowledge on it. Um, I don't have the live scope. Uh, but one of my probably Do top questions, oh, you know I want it. <laughs> I figured you would Yeah, want you know it. I want it, man. <laughs> Even one day, eventually, I'll have it. And uh, But obviously, right out of the box, is is the default settings good to go? Because I know I'm probably, like I said, I've, done on, I've been on your page. I, I looked at some of the questions that guys ask, mm-hmm. and everybody's worried about the so-called settings. Is right out of the box good enough for everything? Plug and play. Plug and play. There's settings that I prefer, manually setting your depth your distance everyone has a their way mm-hmm. distance i keep mine at 20 feet most of the time oh really that's short well yeah because you're on top of them and you're, yeah oh let's fish here fish here fish, you know you can just pinpoint them so much you can see the detail so much yeah, better too but spider rigging long lining whatever no i guess it'd be spider rigging yeah you'd want more of a distance because if you see a fish over here you're going to want to yeah. go over there right but my style if i see a fish over there i'm just going to go over there now, and i was watching one video where you say you can see now Quote me if I'm wrong or, or tell me if I'm wrong, but you can see how big a fish is, 40 to 50 foot away. So, I've gotten pretty good at it. Millwood, Thursday, I think I was trying to tell you the story earlier, but I stopped because we need something to talk yeah, about. Yeah, we need content here. Yeah, so there's a there's a bank that's probably a quarter mile long, and there's not a lot of fish on it. It's a staging flat. Water temp was really cold. The fish know it's time, or it's getting right. close, so they're... Some of them are moving up. Every mm-hmm. fish there is a giant. Quarter mile, I bet there's 50 fish. So they're spread out. Mm-hmm. The The key with the 40 and the 50 feet range, foot range, you can crank that thing up to 40 feet, turn the trolling motor on high, 
and go as fast as possible to cover area. When you're moving, constantly scan. You see a fish over here? All right, there he is. You can tell how big he is from 40 feet away. Once you once you look at it enough, it will show up brighter right. Right. than the others. So once you see it, turn your boat, slow, slow the boat, because you're going four miles an hour when you're searching. Yeah. So 40 feet is a good distance. You can not prop wash the fish, but you can still get stopped and then sneak up on him. And then you, you, you reach down and actually start cutting your distance down on your yeah, to so, 20 feet. So or? it'll be 40. I'll be going 3.89 miles an hour, constantly scanning, covering water, eliminating water quick and efficiently. I'll see a fish out there to the left. First thing I do, stop the boat, turn it to 20, sneak up on him. Mm -hmm. And I'll sneak right up on this fish. You don't want to get the boat over the top. Sometimes it spooks them, spooks them, sometimes it doesn't. But when you can sneak up on them and drop your bait, now, these fish weren't biting. We caught five of them, probably, out of that whole entire bank, but they were all gigantic. Right. So, tournament's probably going to be one there. There's a tournament Saturday on, on Millwood Cat, but um, you just got to cover water. So, the, the good thing about my style, the one pole, you can cover that quarter mile in 30 minutes. You know, unless you're you're trying to pick off fish, you mm -hmm. might spend five minutes on one fish, but then mm -hmm. you go to the next. Spider rigging, you're just going. Well, guess what? You might just pass by that fish. Your bait might have been a foot away, and you there he's back there, and you just right. pass by him, and then you keep going. Well, there might have been one five feet out from your rod right here that you didn't know about. Oh yeah. You just keep going. Yeah. So so my style, you're on your feet. It's I come from a bass background. Right. I'm always on my feet, on the troll motor, going from fish to fish to fish. It's the quickest and most efficient way to tournament fish and to fish, period, for, for big fish. I mean, I go to target big fish. If I see a fish out there and I think he's a pound, I'm just going to keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's on any lake. Yeah. Because I don't go to the lake to catch pound fish. I go to the lake to find two, three. Clients a little different unless they want to catch big fish. But we're out there every day looking for huge fish. And from 40 it's feet fun. You know, it's yeah. from the, the fishing yeah. aspect, like we said a little while ago, you're actually hunting. So mm -hmm. if you see a fish out there from 40 feet, the closer you get, you get 20 feet, you know that fish is three pounds, guarantee your heart is going to be going mm -hmm. through the roof. It's about like, like when a deer walks yeah, out. Yeah, like a 140 inch deer coming out, and you're like, oh man, so there he is. I love deer hunting as much as anyone, but when you or your client have a bait in front of a three pound fish, I, every time I think I'm going to faint. Yeah. Like, Only holding your breath. <laughs> crappie fever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Big crappie fever. Like, And then, man, it just gets you going. And when the fish is looking at it and you know he's a three-pounder and he's about to bite, there's no better feeling. I've only got to experience it five times. Mm -hmm. And every time, I had to sit down just because, you know, I was so worked up. Really? What about, we, we mentioned in a second ago, what about a bait sense? Do you ever put any kind of scent on your bait? Or you so... Just Hadn't tried it? or Not to brag, forgive me, but I catch as many big fish and as many crappies as anybody, and I don't use it. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't find a use in it. If you think it's going to help you, then go try it. But I don't want to spill any of that on my boat carpet. Right. No, I totally feel you there. Yeah, oh, I, got, stuff. I got minnows stepped <laughs> yeah. in my boat. I made a little bit of everything. So yeah, I mean, I'll be using minnows. I, I'll drown a minute. Just like so that. you ha you haven't experienced with with you seeing and watching all the behavior. So you haven't went into in depth I, of trying so to mess with I've, it. I've definitely tried. I've seen a fish not bite a hair jig. I've seen a fish not bite a big jig. I put scent on. I've seen them not bite it. We were talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced these fish are asleep. Right. I think the only thing that's going to wake that fish up is a rattle, or a bladed jig, or something. I haven't got that much into it yet. You know, I'm still relatively new to all this. Yeah. I'm trying to learn every day too, but there's got to be a some way, got to be a way to wake these fish up. Because I've done some studying, you know. I mean, yeah, on the water I, studying. I really, well, on the water too. <laughs> I've read that they go into like a comatose state, kind of like a barren hibernation, but they're still awake to prevent from getting eaten, you know. Because mm -hmm. they're still... Right. That's a great. That's a like great. You see cows out in the field. You know, cow tip, and everybody's heard that term in the past. Oh yeah. And cow tip. Well, the, the cow's still standing up, but he's asleep. So I mm -hmm. mean, 
it would make sense that the uh, crappie or, or any fish in general would be a sleep state. So yeah, that's why you wouldn't even know that if you no. didn't say have lap scope on them. So but, I'll I'll put my bait. A lot of times you don't know where the head is. I'll jig my bait around the, what I think is the head. Then I'll move it to the tail. Then I'll move it all around. That fish doesn't budge. I'm gone to the next one. How how long? I guess it depends on the size of fish or how bad you want to catch him. Yeah, and if it's a three pounder and he's not moving, you're you're wasting your time. Mm-hmm. If he's asleep, what I call him asleep, you know. What I see with these fish is just totally amaze me. And you think, well, you know, they eat millions of minnows in their lifespan, and you got a minnow sitting right in front of these fish's face and you're like he's looking at it i mean mm-hmm. you can turn the position of the fish and he's sitting there looking at this bait and you're thinking you know of course when you got a good bite and all of a sudden he attacks it it's it's like a burst of energy even to me watching yeah it, but, it feels good don't it yeah it does but <laughs> it's so many times that it, it has totally amazed me on how many fish come up and look at your baits and just stare at it mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they swim off yeah that might be a color thing that I, I have it happen to me, but most of the time when that happens, I'm going to, as fast as possible, pick up that hair jig and chase it Go to a down. smaller profile. Yeah. And I'm going to say nine times out of ten, that fish is going to strike. You might not catch it. He might not want to strike. He might go up there and just brush it with his fin. Mm-hmm. But he's going to he's gonna definitely go towards it for sure. Hmm. What's the, um, obviously you had a lot of comments and questions. I mean, you've been, you've, you've, you've said and said it over on a lot of your videos that you just, you can't keep up with all the mess, all the people that's asking Mm -hmm. you questions. What's, what's the top three or five, uh, tips that you can give to everybody getting into this? Well, buy a live scope. Call a bass tank and buy the live scope. Okay. And. It's myself and several of my friends. We've had it since the beginning. One of them's a Bass Pro. He's sponsored by Garmin. So, oh, wait, time out. Do y'all have him in stock right now? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Okay. So he, I know he just got in some, but um, we we've sold so like many. Crazy, I mean, yeah. it's a bad back order situation right now. It's kind of like a Furby back in when I was a kid. Everybody christmas looking for the furbies you know it's or just, beanie babies just, beanie babies yeah i mean it's Wait the same God. thing yeah, i don't even want to go there man my <laughs> wife brought some beanie babies home the other day she's like i got a hundred thousand dollars here i'm like what <laughs> yeah, are you right. talking about like sold I, I thought her grandma gave her some gold or something i'm like what's in there you know she brings out beanie babies <laughs> <laughs> so get back on the tips all right okay. uh tip get 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 with the bass tank get live scope figure out what unit's going to be best for you obviously not everyone's going to go out and want a 16-inch live scope mm-hmm. unit. Not everyone's going to want a 12-inch. I do for Christmas. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I do, too. Um, number two. Man, there's so many. Manually set your depth. So, if the fish are all suspended throughout all of Lake Washington and they're 8 to 10 feet down, put your depth at 15. I don't care if you're in 40 foot of water. You don't need to see 40 foot down right. if they're suspended. So if you if you pattern the fish and you know where the fish are, just eliminate the bottom. You don't need to see the bottom if, if you know they're all suspended. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's going to help you. I try to keep my depth at either 15 or 20 because the more I stare at it, at that, over over time I've learned – that fish is two pounds because I'm used to seeing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, a two pound fish and 15 feet of water is going to look different than a two pound fish if your graph's on 40. Yeah, right. yeah. But it's going to show small. So the shallower you can keep it, the better because you're going to be able to learn how big these fish are mm-hmm. in relation to the screen picture on your graph. Because mm-hmm. at, at 20 feet, at 20 feet forward and 15 feet down, the box is two feet wide and one foot down. So it's two feet by one foot. So a big crappie is going to take up most of that box. Mm-hmm. It's a grid is what you're looking at. So right. the more you stare at it, you're going to be able to, okay, that's a three-pound fish. I need to chase that thing 100 yards if I have Put to. Put the effort into that yeah, one. Yeah. So what's the, what's the furthest and longest you chased one? Easily 200 yards. 200 yards. Chasing one fish. Did you get him? Yeah. Got him. So I've actually been at Skytook Lake, and I've gone 500 yards. And, you know, I'm just weaving in and out of trees. 
<laughs> just 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 fishing trees, you know. And before you know it, in the summer, you have fifty fish under the boat that just followed you two hundred yards. Getting in the shade. Getting in the shade. So you'll turn that live scope around. Well, where are these hundred <laughs> fish come from? So, and clients can attest to it. I've sold a lot of Garmin units because of this. You'll have a hundred fish under the boat. You put the trolling motor on high, back up quick because you don't want them to follow you. Go forward quick. You want to be fishing right where the boat was sitting. You catch five quick crappie, huh. and then really? they be right under the boat again. Really? And you just do it again. Back up as fast as possible so they don't follow you. Drop your bait real quick. Catch two or three. They'll go right under now, the boat. How deep was the cool. fish? Yeah, heck yeah, that's, <laughs> that's cool. cool. So how deep was them fish when you did that? Uh, So, man, it just depends. There. Whatever the depth they were at before. We can be in the middle of the channel. We can be in six feet of water. And those fish, in the summer, go under the boat. When it's hot. That's why the 12-foot rods are so important. Because you can pull up on a stump, and that fish, you can't reach him yet with the rod, not even with the 12-footer. And he already sees the shade, and it's already coming under your boat. That's crazy. I Before never... you can get to them. That's crazy. Now this, the, right now, it's not like that. Yeah. yeah. But, and I'm still learning every day. In the summertime, if you get close to a tree and there's a fish on it, he's going to end up right in the middle of your boat. Right by the steering wheel in the never... center. Did you already know that, Brad? Well, no, but it makes perfect sense. I've noticed even with live scope, you know, I, these fish even come up under the boat sometimes. And I'm thinking... I've always had the perception that it scares them all mm -hmm. the time. The boat's constantly scaring fish. But I've <laughs> learned here recently, looking at the live scope, you know, for hours and every day, is a lot of times these fish are almost attracted to the boat. Yeah. They come to the boat. That's crazy. Right now, they're where I'm fishing, they're afraid of it. I don't know if it's a sound. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because it's cloudy every single day because we never get sun anymore. <laughs> right. But when it's sunny in the summer and when it's hot, you cannot keep the fish out from the boat. I tell the cut my clients, you have to catch him before he goes under the boat. That's wild. Now that's on a sunny day. When the cloud, you know, if it's mm -hmm. cloudy, you're gonna they're not gonna go under the boat because there's shade everywhere. That's why when you think back and it makes perfect sense, all the boat piers and people shooting yeah. dots for. That's yeah. why they're there. That's why they're so, there. <laughs> and when I came out with the live scope, when I, and I, I learned this with the panoptics, these fish going under the boat, people were giving me so much hate saying that I'm so much full of crap. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm lying to people. They're, well, now people are experiencing it. I've taken plenty of clients out and they're like, wow, you were right. You know, well... I, <laughs> just what you're seeing. That's yeah, just what you're seeing. I mean, that's what, what you're I'm doing. Seeing. Now, right now, no. But, you know, come come May, June, July, they're going to be going under the boat. That's crazy. Um, let's touch base on uh, what units you run, your full setup, and and actually a lot of the question is, where do you m mount your transducer? So a transducer, I'm only going to recommend on the trolling motor shaft. Why? I don't recommend a pole because on the shaft, you're completely hands-free. You can move wherever, and if you're chasing a fish, you don't want to be foot on the trolling motor, rod in your hand, chasing a fish, messing with the pole. Mm -hmm. You want to have all eyes on that fish, rod in hand, foot on trolling motor, going. You don't want to have to mess with the pole. You know, I might be chasing a fish forward. He might turn to the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guess what? All I got to do he is doesn't... turn the trolling motor to the left. Yeah. I don't have to mess with the pole. Right. We'll get into this a little bit later, but how, how high do you set the transducer up above the... or how? Seven inches above the troll motor shaft head, or not the troll motor shaft, the head of the troll motor. Mm -hmm. Seven inches above it. So, this is a... Show it to the camera, the GoPro This here. right here, you got a good view of it. Uh, this is a 1242 yeah, XSB. I love this unit. I uh, This is not a touch screen. I don't use touch screens because in the winter, you got gloves on. It gets kind of tough. So the two things you're going to control the most is your gain and your distance. This little knob, a couple clicks, there you go. Your distance is out. A couple clicks back, there you go. It's back at 20. You what what with, model is that again? 1242 XSV. How much that retail for? 24.99. 24.99. So you get in some muddy water. You want to lower your gain. 
push it. There you go. Hmm. There goes your gain. So the main buttons I push on this thing is the power and this right here. And that's it. It automatically, every time I turn it on, comes on live scope. Mm -hmm. So this right, if, if I lose this. You going to go buy another one? Well, if I lose this, I'm no longer even a mediocre fisherman anymore. Because I really think I forgot how to go out and catch them. I have to admit. <laughs> I can't see myself going to that lake right now and catching a fish without it. Yeah. Now, does that does that set up, does that come with the transducer? Do you buy it separate? So this, so this one's a little more expensive, but it has your upgraded mapping, your one foot contour lines. It has your down view and your side view transducer that comes with it. You can get them without the transducer, I think. Um, but th this is going to have your beautiful Garmin mapping, mm -hmm. you know, your your one foot contour line. So my opinion, Garmin has the best mapping on the market. So I that's I ain't got to see the mapping yet on it. That's something else to think about. You know, one thing that I've noticed with the live scope is, uh, you know, whenever I, I'm trolling, I'm constantly looking at contours and break lines and everything else. But with that live scope, I haven't had to look at my mapping no. as much because I can turn to the left. All right, I can see it yes. pull up. Yes. Or turn to the right, see it dip down. This unit is the only thing you need on your boat. Now, that's the only thing I need on my boat. I can go anywhere in the country with one unit on the bow of my boat and find fish. Yeah. Okay. So it's powerful. Be, a powerful tool. Powerful obviously, tool. it helps to have one at the console. You know, so you don't have to run your troll motor everywhere. You can just drive around. But it's not really... What about that small one over there? What do you use that small one for? Small one, this is going to be... So this is going to be my mapping. This one sits right beside that one up front. So you leave that one on just for mapping? Yeah. So this also can do... This is what you have, right? Yep. Live scope. This is the cheapest way you can get into the live scope. Yeah. What model is it? 93 SV+. Plus. Was that retail for again? Do you remember? Five ninety nine, I believe. So there was a sale. Yeah. Five ninety nine. Yeah. Pretty sure you can get this one for eight forty nine with no transit. Yeah. I might be lying. Call the bass tank. They're the price guys. I'm just the guy that fishes. <laughs> but they did have a sale on these for. I think they sold out quick. Why would they sell them if they're just selling like hotcakes? I couldn't do it. Well, I think it before it blew up. But yeah. Now everybody's begging for them, of course. But uh. so yeah, I, I don't think anyone anticipated on it. How long was actually the panoptics and I can't even say that right and the live scope out before it, it it blew up? So the panoptic, I was picking these fish off one by one with the panoptics. I loved it. I was posting everywhere. Hey, this is great. It never really took off. Don't really know why. That uh. Is that thunder? We got yeah. thunder rolling here <laughs> that, uh, at the crappy connection. <laughs> so that was out for three or four years before the, this came out. The Panopics yeah. was out yeah. three or four years prior, yeah. and it's just now grabbing a hold. What do you got the, about the last six well, months well, last a year? Scope, the live scope, scope just came out. Yeah, but no, but but still, I mean, it's just just as daily. No, you don't think so? No. So man, that I never seen the Panoptics. The Panoptics was life changing. I'm telling you. This is next level, but the panoptics, if I had the panoptics right now, I would still be catching the same fish. Okay. Now, maybe not pulling up in a brush pile and yeah. saying, there's a two-pounder on the left side. There's a, a small one in the middle. Let me catch that two-pounder. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that. And you couldn't really tell the size of the fish. A one-pound fish would be a big blob. You know? Mm -hmm. A two-pound fish would be a big blob of the same size. I got you. So you would have to kind of catch all of them. But the Panoptics, man, you have the Panoptics on your boat three years ago, you would have been winning tournaments. Huh. Because it's deadly out here. I got a oh, technical question about the um, your units. Are you running one independent battery just for... I have a, uh, a 31 series running. Right. It's my crank battery. That's what that's hooked up to. So you just... I know I've been told that between the box and everything else, it, it's sucking a lot of so, power. It depends. If I go and I sit in one spot all day long and my units are on, my battery's going to die. But I move around so much. I'm constantly moving, covering area, covering water, finding the biggest fish in the lake. I'm constantly starting my motor, recharging that battery. Right. So I've never had an issue, but I also move around more than the average guy. 
All right, let's say when you're moving around, I know you've got your trolling motor down probably. Looking, th- if, are right. you looking through your live scoop, uh, scope as you're actually moving? Not or? if I'm moving. I kind of just, like Millwood the other day, I got out there to the middle, no fish. Fished there about an hour, found a few, whatever. Loaded up left, went somewhere else. Found a few fish, not what I thought, left there, went somewhere else. I moved around five times, like driving, before I found, okay, this is where I'm going to fish. So, I don't know how my starter hasn't went out on my boat, because I start (laughs) it so much. I'm constantly moving. So, I don't leave, and where I fish, timber most of the time, I can't leave my trolling motor down. Break it off. I accidentally left it down, pulling up on a boat trailer one time. (laughs) It's never a good day. So, I try not to break any more trolling motors. Um, I just move around a lot. Mm -hmm. Bass fishing background. I'm not afraid to run 15 miles across the lake if I have to. I'm not afraid to go to three lakes in the same day. Whatever it takes for me or clients to catch fish. Right. You know, I'll, I'll move around. So, Is there anything that that, sh- that you can tell Garmin that you would change it, change with? Like, is there any changes that you make with it? I, that's already far exceeded any of my expectations. So there's nothing you change with it? I'm sure there's something, but I can't think of it. I really can't. When it's life changing as it's been for me, I can go out and I can catch fish at will. I mean, it's easy, man. What's the craziest thing you've seen so far since you've got it? Like the behavior, or, or is there anything crazy that you witnessed? Uh, Your wildest story? Man, I don't know. It's it's <laughs> every fish I catch is crazy. Yeah. You're like, how is this? How how can how yeah. can I see that fish? <laughs> you know. Um, I saw a fish, I was fishing 24 feet of water, and I remember it quite well. My baits were already down in the water. Now, I don't know what triggered this fish to to do this. My baits were deep. This fish was at four feet, went down on a line, and hit that jig. 20 foot down. It went 20 foot down. It went literally 20 feet from the surface he was hungry. to the I don't know if it was a coincidence the yeah. fish was just swimming down huh. I don't know if he felt it if he smelled it if he saw it I don't know but this fish went 20 feet down was you using a minnow on it or anything or just a plain plastic that was probably a minnow I don't yeah. remember specifically it might have even been a jig I don't remember but I mean and something else that's crazy on every lake that I fished you might as well not even turn your your console unit on because these fish are so shallow. Yeah, we talked that before the show here. Get in detail of explain to us of the guys that scan what they miss. Dude, go in details on that. I right now Lake Washington. I've never been out there in my life. I bet there's fish three feet under the surface out oh, there absolutely. in the middle. Absolutely, out there in the middle of the lake. You you stayed on one of the videos I was sitting there. You know, like I said, I was grabbing content off your page. I'm, you said they're less than a foot underneath the water, right? You 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 got a video of one of what six inches? I uh, yeah, I've caught fish thirty eight degree water this year, three inches like this far under the surface. I don't I don't know how you can't see them. Mm-hmm. I've seen them here. Yeah, I've under seen the surface. under the surface actually swimming, and what amazed me about that is how fast these fish move. <laughs> so that reminds me, I was at Fort Gibson Lake back before I even had a boat. I was probably seventeen years old, fishing the enclosed dock. You could see these crappie in fairly clear water swimming around the surface. Mm-hmm. You can't see those with your traditional or your side view. Yeah. The only way you're going to see them is to put the trawl motor down. There's no telling how many fish all these anglers out here, the tournament fishermen, bypass because they were scanning instead of fishing. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm in the habit. When I get there, I just put the trawl motor down and let the live scope tell me. I don't hardly scan. I might scan to find a channel. But I'm not looking for fish. Really? Because these fish are shit. Yeah. We got 38, we got down to 35 degree water. Sky took lake. Before I came up here, down here, I was catching fish in 12 inches of water on the banks. Really? And that's one thing I hadn't experienced yet with the uh, live scope is really, you know, I fish six foot of water, but not any, you know, that three or four, which they're. You know, any day now, ready to go mm-hmm. to, but so it. 
how do you do your settings different on anything? So a foot, I'll crank it up to probably 10 foot bottom, mm -hmm. maybe eight. And obviously when you put your depth to eight feet, that crappie's going to look like a oh, Volkswagen. Yeah. Right, know? right. It's like, all right, that's crappie. And he looks this big and you catch him and he's a pound. I can't really tell you in that shallow water how big he is because I'm just not used to seeing it. But out here it's going to be insane on these cypress trees mm -hmm. and the spawn you're going to be able to see all those knees around every tree you're going to be able to see all right there's a cypress knee out there there's a big old oh, fish I'm, right on it i'm excited for I that pull up, so with the panoptics i pull up on one tree at millwood last year caught 14 fish on one cypress tree really <laughs> what i mean and that's really not that many when they're spawning and they're all pushed yeah. up on here but when they're all close to two pounds and they might not be right there on the trunk, they might be eight feet out here on a cypress knee. Right. Nobody is going to catch that fish. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it really is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. Like, man, you take these people that have never caught big fish, they're just going to start loading them up and they're going to put them in the cooler and take them home. You know? Yeah. That, that's kind of scary because I'm a big proponent of let's throw them back so they'll grow. But now, it should. I mean, I'm catching two and a half pounders at will. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of scares you, don't it? Yeah, I'm terrified. So explain, <laughs> express yourself on that. Express yourself on that. Do so, you think? Do you, what do you think the last one's going to do with it? Uh, conservation, man. I'm all about. So hey, I just cleaned ten two pound crappie yesterday. I don't want to sit here and sound hypocritical. I think there's certain lakes that you're not going to want to keep a two pounder out of, and I think there's certain there's certain circumstances I wanted to take some fish home for my grandparents I don't have a problem keeping some fish for my grandparents you know I'm not if if I let those big fish yesterday go that I caught but I took some big ones home for my grandparents I'm not gonna sit here and say never keep a two pound fish mm -hmm. but I guarantee you if you keep that fish when he's two and three quarter pounds he's definitely not gonna you're not gonna get a plaque a year later 3.25 right. right. she's gonna so it's just like deer hunting the sport is growing so fast. Deer hunting kind of just exploded. Ten years ago, you could get a deer lease where I hunt, three dollars an acre. Now it's fifteen dollars an acre. Mm -hmm. Two years might be thirty. It's crappie fishing is doing the same thing. You don't want to pay money. You don't want to spend five grand in electronics to go keep five two pounders on a six hundred acre lake when the ultimate goal is to catch a three. That's my goal. I don't know what anyone else's yeah. goal is. I've also been criticized for saying, hey, the three pounder is a new two pounder. I There's been years I don't even catch a two pounder. Mm -hmm. I caught over 200 last year. I'm over 90 this year, probably. Probably not that many. Probably. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a lot, yeah. But, pro, uh, easily 80, easily. And there's been years that I don't catch one. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm realizing, hey, if I keep all these fish. There's not going to be any more because they don't just magically appear. Right. So I think I recommend, I'm not telling you, don't ever keep a two pounder for your client, you know? But I think that the majority of the fish should be. You know, my favorite size to eat personally is 11 to 13, personally. That's the one I want to eat. Man, I want to eat a nine. Really? I don't want a nine. I want 11 to they 13. They get so crispy, dude, one by one. <laughs> Cut so, it up, man. So, Cut it up. So my, my deal, and. With the live scope, it's a lot easier to keep catch these two pound crappie, you know. Mm -hmm. Snap a picture, let it go. The bass guy's been doing it for years. Oh yeah. Hey, the bass masters in the seventies, ten fish limit, they were keeping ten seven pounders and filleting them. Mm. Now look where they're at. They're releasing everything. They have tournament trails now that they don't even put them in the live well. Yeah. 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 I really. I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I really hope that crappie fishing will get there someday because we've seen how big of an impact keeping crappie has been at Grenada. They used to weigh like in. Washington. Washington. Yeah. I don't Washington, know, I can vouch for myself on I that. I don't know anything about this, but I do know looking at some, some weights on some tournaments where they kept like, or they caught 53 pounders or something crazy on Grenada. 30. What was it? You know, I, I remember one year at Grenada. My my own weight, I had weighed in 1904 and come in fifth place. Yeah, so <laughs> guess what? 
these tournament trails, they're not saying, hey, let's release these big fish. They're saying, fillet them, go home. Well, ACT and Crop Masters for years, you know, you got to bring them in live, and uh, ACT's actually taken a step further. They've, they've got a boat set up yeah. to release them back into the lake. So I think, you know, the, the sport of crappie fishing is coming around. So, but we've seen weighing 19-pound stringers. Mm-hmm. I've done a little bit of research on it, on Grenada. There's mm-hmm. been 15-pound stringers that win these things mm-hmm. now. Because when you have 300 boats out there, everyone's keeping the biggest fish they can catch. These fish just don't magically appear. I wish they did. Yeah. But I'm not a biologist. I don't know if it takes one year or five years for them to grow. If it takes six months. Yeah, each lake's different on that. If you're out there keeping them, there's gonna, they're not going to keep right. growing. So I, I think if everyone just started snapping pictures and releasing them, obviously crappie are prevalent. And They're, delicious. And good. Yeah. The filet of the Lake Washington out here. Um, <laughs> keep the small ones to eat. Yeah. No one wants a hunking filet this big that doesn't even get cooked all the way through when you fry it. Well, I think these different lakes have these regulations and I think that's where our, our anglers come in and tournament trails and mm-hmm. everything else is, you know, helping influence our, uh, our wildlife fisheries and, you know, the, I can speak for I can't speak for every state in the nation, of course, but like uh, Eagle Lake down here, which is a, a very very good crappie fishing lake. Uh, that biologist he has stayed on that lake, uh, and I wish I could give a name out to, to give him a shout out because he's been down there every day, uh, and he would say at the end of the day, "All right, I want to weigh your fish. What you catch? What you throw back?" And a lot of these lakes are getting really managed heavily for crappie fishing in Mississippi. So I mean. Just coming down here, I passed by 15 boats. Yeah. Every one of them had spider rig setups. Yeah. That's the thing, crappie fishing down here. So there's a lot of people taking a lot of fish out. Grenada, for instance, it's not set up to release big fish. If you want to go have a fish fry, guess what? Every fish you keep has to be big. Over 12 but, inches. Yeah, because you can't keep that 10-incher. Mm-hmm. So I I can sit here and talk about it all day. I have done nothing to change it. You know, I think there should be a slot everything 15 to 16 throw back you can keep one over 16 just like bass same deal those big huge mega giant football Mm -hmm. 16 inch girth crappie Mm -hmm. have great genetics just like a big buck oh yeah you want to release those fish i want to release those fish you know so i think a slot would be perfect to ensure that these big fish don't get slaughtered because that's, in my yeah. mind, that's what's happening. Not, hey, in the, we've came a long ways in the past year. We've seen how easy it is to go out and catch big fish now. Yeah. A lot of people are letting a lot of big fish go. What do you think What do you think the, the live scope is going to do what, with the trails? It's getting dominated right now. I, I don't think you flat out. Uh, do, you think, do you think, I mean, there's a lot of hearsay that so, they're not going to allow it. So, you know it's an amazing tool when a Lawrence Pro staffer is using Garmin under, under the radar and winning tournaments. Mm-hmm. You know something's, something's up. Um, I think if they released every fish, if, if a grenade was legal, let them go use a grenade. Uh, just whatever brings the biggest fish back. The whole point of tournament fishing is showcasing these lakes mm-hmm. and how amazing they can be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So why would you want to prevent someone from showcasing a lake that you're wanting people to come be a part of? You know what I mean? So I think whatever helps put fish in the boat, even if it was yo-yos. Well, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's legal here. <laughs> Yo-yo? Yo-yos. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, like yo- yo-yos. I don't yeah. They're legal in Arkansas, too. Uh. I was competing with some yo-yoers yesterday. No. Yeah, yesterday. They were running all around. (laughs) Well, I think it goes back to regulations a lot of it. You know, I I just want the the wildlife and fishery departments to stay focused. And and because this is going to impact crappie fishing. The Garmin Live Scope is going to impact crappie fishing. Whether it's next year or 10 years down the road. I just... If we don't do something... I want them to stay on top of their job. And I think that's... And for the most part, I think most of them are doing that. They might not even know about this yet. They might not, but they will. Hopefully. They're going to have to. So, 
if if they didn't outlaw yo-yos, they're not going to outlaw this. Right. I mean, they're, there's going to, at least back home, I can go out and easily have a 300 fish day. Mm-hmm. Easily. When I'm catching three limits, 20-something straight days, if I'm, it, I'm obviously I might be the only one doing it now because of that. But if twenty people are doing that every single day, that they go out, we got problems. I mean, there's got to be a line drawn somewhere, and I don't want to sound hypocritical because I I do keep a ton of fish. But I guarantee you, if I catch a two pounder, he's going back in the water. You know. Well, yeah. Um... The ones to keep, I think, are the small ones. I'm not a biologist, so. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just, I think we all need to... It is scary to think about the future. Yeah. Like, Keep a close eye on it. Mm-hmm. You think you think a lot of guys is going to be getting rid of their their spider rig set up and their, their trolling technique and everything? I mean... You trying to get me in trouble? No, no, I just want to know your kidding. opinion on it. No. So, you guys know my opinion. Uh, I think spider rigging... I've called it goofy before. You know, I, I think it probably is... A little goofy. I was telling you guys earlier. <laughs> it's I, all right, man. It's how you're, you're, he knows I'm not agreeing I, with this one. I right? think driving a Prius is goofy. Right. I'm going to probably make fun of you, but my best friend drives a Prius. Just because I make fun of you and I don't agree with it doesn't mean I don't like you. Right. I've said spider rigging's goofy. You only need one rod. I really think that, you know. People, I don't know if they took it out of context, but... They took it that I was making fun of them, or now I'm like the worst guy in the world, you know. They want to go talk bad about me, whatever, you know. But that's my opinion. Your opinion is, you can go out there pulling and yeah. spank me. Hey, that's fine. You, everyone can have an opinion. My opinion yeah. is, one rod's the future. It's just so you hear his personal preference, just yeah. like, you know. Yeah. I don't, you know, the thing I love about crappie fishing, and one reason we started this whole podcast is... To help grow this sport, yeah, and that me and Josh talked about this before is you know anything that we can do. Uh, he's he's a you know a single polar. He's targeting fish, and there's going to be people that love that, and that's great. There's going to be people that only want a spider rig, that's great. There's only going to be people that want to use artificial. There's going to be people only use live bait. Anything to help this sport grow mm-hmm. is my my yeah. my goal with this show and. Hopefully everybody else that's really in the the spotlight with this yeah. crappie fishing is helping this sport. I agree too. Right. See, it. some people are. I use menace. Some people hate using menace. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with spider rigging. I think, obviously, from a guide standpoint, I tell you what, Josh Jones has an open invitation to get in my boat. Uh, I can. And I will take him spider rigging uh, and long line <laughs> trolling. Heck, I was talking to Godwin at Crop University. It's intriguing, mm-hmm. long lining. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. especially with these new trolling motors, it's rela- After a day of fishing with me, I am worn worn out. out. Yeah. Do you know I'm sore from the last two days? Hey, I wouldn't mind going sometime. He's got to relax. I told Brad, you know, we we fish. I fish up there at Egypt, and it's a cast in Clearwater Lake. And I've been telling my buddies, man, my hats off to all these bass guys. They stand up all day. They're casting, yeah, dude. They're, so. uh, you know, I'm wore out just from doing that. So, my opinion, it's just an opinion. I think the future is one rod. Obviously, when you can pinpoint these fish with precision, precision accuracy. Yeah. Going. That's what I'm getting towards is yeah. you know, you, you've obviously had it a lot. Yeah, I've seen You know it. what you know here, and you're just speaking your word, and you're preaching about the one-rod approach there. Which, so, go ahead. I'm a, spy, I'm a former spider rigger. Me, we're allowed seven rods apiece in Oklahoma. Wow. We've had wow. three people, and we've had 21 rods going on the same boat before. Wow. That's a lot of money. I've done it. I'm not bashing anyone. I'm just yeah. saying... The future is one rod, in my opinion, because I've I've done both, you know. Yeah. And nothing irritated me more than hooking into a sand bass and getting eight rods tangled. Right. Man. You know. About a six pound hybrid. Or that. Yeah. So. That drum or that Gasper goo, whatever y'all call it. I also, hey, when I started this whole live scope, I said this was the future. I was taking a lot of heat for that, man. It's not the future. I can do the same thing with my mm. 360, my Lorentz 2D, this and that. 
Well, now, seven months later, look where we're at. All these people, I'm not going to say all of them. Well, great, yeah, there's some great people. A lot of people because, I mean, people. It, you know, you got Garmin back ordered. I can sit here and tell you some people that directly message me, not good things. I'm cocky, this, blah, blah, blah. Talking bad about the live scope. These people now have the live scope. I could I can make a lot of people eat crow just by showing some old messages, <laughs> and now these people are now running it. You know, so hey, that's it's, great. It's, it's a great tool, the crappie fishing. I hope somebody that you know hasn't got into crappie fishing yet. I hope it helps them. You know, venture out. Yeah, yeah. Go it makes it. Fishing. It makes it so much more it's, fun. It's, yeah, it oh yeah, so much fun. And yeah, you stated when, when we was uh, I forget where we was at when I was down here for that week. You know, even if. Even if we're not catching nothing, you're sitting there watching, trying to it figure it out that, even more. It is going from crappie yeah. fishing to crappie hunting. It's yeah. now fun watching you guys catch fish. Yeah, there he is, there he is. Yeah, you know, yeah. Him, you know yeah. I now don't have to be the one catching them because I'm seeing it all mm-hmm. on your bait now. You know, mm-hmm. or wh- wherever we're targeting these fish. Yeah. So it just people say it's ruining fishing. I just want to go out there. All right, guys. Hey, sorry we had some uh, lightning storms here. Shut the power off. Yeah, the the thunder rolled in and the lightning, and then knocked the power off briefly. But we're back. Yeah, we're back. I'm, I'm glad we're not on that lake right now, or it, was. It would be tough fishing today. <laughs> real tough, real tough. Um, I don't forgot we was getting uh, seasick out there. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I think uh, I think we want to dive in on some baits you was wanting to show, right? Yeah, we can. So I got obviously a couple bait primary bait sponsors here um this right here is a beaver bottom it's a two and a half two and three quarter inch bait this is worcester wildcat this is going to be my new what's the name again this is a beaver bottom worcester wildcat worcester worcester i can't even pronounce that worcester w-i-s-t-e-r mm-hmm. it's a lake in I gotcha. anyways i think that's going to be my favorite beaver bottom color this is my absolute favorite color in the world and probably profile Mm -hmm. this is a three inch who makes it three inch slim stick (laughs) he was he having a moment there with it this this (laughs) is a close up that's a bonehead slim stick in paradise paradise so these boneheads you can catch a hundred fish on one jig i i haven't ever counted that's just a a good guess a bunch um it's good you can tell feel that brad I've been using this bait for two straight days. That particular bait right there. The same one. And you can tell it is beat. Crappie up. I mean, it's it's falling apart. And still, still chugging along. I mean, you know, sometimes you might have to cut the end off, you know, just a little bit to reworm it on there, but... You know, I might get these baits for free, but I don't waste them. Right. I will give this bait all it can take until I absolutely have to put a new bait on. So that's what's awesome about these bonehead baits. Um, same thing with these beaver bottoms. You know, when it starts to get worn out at the top, you can just cut just a little bit off and reworm it on there. Oh, really? And get another five or let ten me, fish. Let me see that. So, and that's probably with bobby garland too oh man i you know it's no telling i don't even keep track of it yeah. either, but I, I catch a ton of fish you on could it. you could cut the tips off yeah. and reworm it on there and mm-hmm. get 10 more fish and, uh, i've showed a lot of people where um where you're if you ever want to downsize you can kind of bite the tail off right there yeah bite the tail off and just kind of minimize your baits you know what i mean to something yeah you bite the tail off especially yeah. if they're short striking correct cut off a little bit or just pick up the so this is a crappie G hair jig. Crappie G. Crappie G. Where you get them at? He has a Facebook page now. Crappie G. Crappie G. I like that name. Um, Very yeah. Greg Davis is the, the guy's name out of Louisiana. So I'm I'm always going to say you need four things on the deck of your boat. It doesn't matter who makes it. You need a big jig. You need a small jig. 
you need a spoon. I have one in there, which I should have got it. Yeah, we should have got and a lot on a this minnow. Thing. Big jig, small jig, spoon, minnow. And you will consistently catch crappie every single time you go. You got a rod for each each jig on there? Each. I just use the same one. How do you hook your minnows? Through Can the you? bottom of the lip, top of the nose. Right. So well, that's kind of... And I use a 2 watt gold Aberdeen hook mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with the split shot above. I, I've tried using the the jigs, you know, the jig heads like this, but it seems like the weight pushes the minnow off somehow because I always come up without bait. So I don't use jig heads. I use a gold 2 watt Aberdeen hook. Eagle claw. I've heard some okay. guys, uh, when they jig artificial baits using minnows, I've heard a guy just taking the head off of the minnows and putting on there for the natural scent. Have you heard of that? So I haven't heard of that, but I was with a guy one time on Old Mulgee Lake, and we were getting low on minnows. So he would take one minnow and cut it into thirds, <laughs> and he would catch fish on the tail, he would catch fish on the midsection, and so he would wow. catch fish on the head. Natural, huh. natural nibble. Something. Yeah, I mean, when we were getting short on minnows. Yeah. Hmm. So, just, you gotta... Keep trying. What's the word I'm looking for? Now, my vocab is very low, yeah. so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it, it definitely works. Well, you uh, was talking about a while ago, Jimmy Houston. I'll see on your Facebook page. You, how do you how'd you get to know Jimmy Houston? Oh, I got to know him through Wally Marshall, actually. I worked in college at Bass Pro Shops, and... I, I would do the demonstrations in the fish tank and Wally was beside me doing a demonstration and he he probably doesn't remember it probably neither does Jimmy but looking up to Jimmy my whole entire life you know right. like a lot of us I was like starstruck you know right. so I was we were doing the demos and a brim a perch hit Wally's bait and he's like oh get off there brim you know they don't call him brim in Chicago so I asked him, I said, where are you from? He's like, uh, something, something, born and raised, southern Arkansas. I was like, you know, my grandparents live in Bearden. He's like, my aunt and uncle live in Bearden, or my first cousin, or family. Mm-hmm. Well, long story short, I used to spend my summers in Arkansas. Wally's aunt, or cousin, or someone was a male lady, and every single day she would stop at the pond and ask me how many I was catching. Yeah. So we kind of had a Small connection world. like that. Yeah. Small world. So I, we were talking, and he's like, well, we're about to go to lunch with Jimmy. And I was like, yeah, I'll go, you know. So we ended up walking to the food court in the mall, getting a McDonald's or something. So that's how I met Jimmy mm-hmm. and Wally. And then from spare, there, you were you filmed a TV show with him? Yeah, we've... we've tried to film a lot fish don't always cooperate yeah Especially i know how that TV. is <laughs> yeah we filmed a 10 killer smallmouth show a couple keystone shows old mulgy bass and crappie you follow crappie i mean we we fished quite a bit together so we well, definitely uh first off i want to thank you for coming on crappie connection and uh you know taking your time and you know, definitely. First off, I want to tell you come back. We'll do this again. And I'll be back. You remember yeah. that you got the invitation to come spider rigging and long lining, and uh, I'll be back. If yeah. the weather cooperated today, I would be here tomorrow fishing. Yeah. All right. So. Well, anything else you want to add to all the viewers that you got that you listen tuning in for you right now? There's so much, man. Well, let's spill one. Hey, well, spill I one. can't. So. Put me on the <laughs> spot. Have to catch us next time, then. <laughs> yeah. There'll be a next time. I'll be back. Um, maybe even in April. Okay. I have two weeks. I'm going to be down at, at Millwood in April chasing those big trophy three pounders. That'll so. work. That'll work. I guess anything else you want to add, Brad? No, man. I had a blast with you, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good meeting you, you yeah. know, finally. Meeting the legend, Josh Jones, here. Yeah, you can't say that. <laughs> Well, the guys, man, I uh, want to give a shout out to uh, the direction Mark Stowe, man. Watch that TV show; he's pretty cool. He gets to uh, uh, go and fish for a little bit of everything. I think I've seen one. He's fishing some sturgeon. Uh, check him out; he's on Direction or uh, Satellite TV, all that. Other than that, man, I'm Justin Berry. I'm Brad Chapel here. Josh Jones, man, appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, guys, we're out of here. All right, holla. I always remember cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can feel.